In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about parallel versus perpendicular lines. I'm going to start off, I think, by uh, just going with parallel. Maybe that's the easiest one. So if two lines are parallel, what that means, and these are going to be straight lines, and if they're parallel, I'm going to say then that the two gradients, in other words, the slopes, the two gradients, are the same. In other words, Remember from before, we were just learning about straight lines. That means that m of uh, one graph is equal to m of the other graph. Okay, when you look at this equation, remember it goes y equals mx plus b. In other words, the term in front of the x is going to be the same for the two different equations if they are parallel. Okay, so in other words, they look, I mean, this is kind of silly, but I mean they look parallel to each other. To each other. All right, so I can give you an example of that. Uh, maybe I'll do, yeah, I'll actually graph it here. So maybe I'll give an example here. So maybe I'll graph uh, the equation y equals x plus one maybe, and then another one that's parallel to it. If I want it parallel, I have to make it the same number in front of the x. But my y-intercept doesn't have to be the same. Maybe it's negative two. Let's just try to graph these really quickly here to make sure that we remember how to graph straight line graphs here. So if I want to do that, then I could, uh, of course, just draw myself a set of axes here. Of course, I'll try to make this a little bit fast. So I'll go like this, and I'll make sure this is x, this is y, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and 4, and so on. This is negative 1, negative 2, this is 1, this is 2, negative 1, negative 2, and so on, just so I know what my scale is. And in both graphs, I know that my slope is going to be positive 1, and so both of them right here will have an m value of uh, positive 1. Oops. So if I want to do that, that means then that I can say that the gradient of both of them will equal plus 1. And then in this equation right here, my y-intercept is positive 1 as well. So that means I start here, and then for every 1 unit I go to the right, I go 1 up. That's what a gradient of plus 1 means. Okay, so for this first equation here, x plus 1, I start off at plus one, that's my y-intercept. I go to the right by one, and up by one, and right by one, up by one, because my slope is also one. So in this case then, I could uh, you know, draw myself a nice straight line, and say maybe I start here and go like this. It turns out that's gonna be the same. Okay, so I start here, I go one to the right, up one, one to the right, up one. That's because they both have a slope of one, or gradient of one. What about the second graph? This one right here has a y-intercept of negative two. Okay, so in this case then, I need to draw myself some point. That's actually down here at negative 2. But it still has a gradient of plus 1, which means I go 1 right, up 1, run 1 right, up 1, and so on. In other words, I can draw that. I go like this a few times just to make sure I sort of get the graph looking nice. There we go. And if you can see, these two lines look parallel. They should. In fact, in geometry, a lot of times we'll even add this little symbol right here. We could say then that these two are actually parallel. We often write a little arrow for both of them, for example. All right, uh, actually, I'll put them in a nicer place here just so we can see it. So maybe we put an arrow here and an arrow here. Usually that means that these two lines are actually parallel to each other. So even if I didn't draw them very nice and didn't make them look parallel, as soon as I put the symbol on them, it tells you they are parallel. In this case, as long as I graphed it correctly, I'm okay. Now that was parallel lines, but what if I want perpendicular lines? Okay, that option here. So if two lines are perpendicular, what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, the two lines are at 90 degrees to each other. Okay, they're at 90 degrees to each other. In other words, we sometimes say they are at right angles. That's what it means to be perpendicular. They're at right angles to each other. Um, and a nice little relation that actually relates them, it tells you that m1 times m2 equals negative one. I think that's the key to doing this one right here is actually knowing that for perpendicular lines, m1 times m2 equals negative one. For parallel lines, however, we know that m1 equals m2. I think that's pretty important to say here. Okay, so in this case then, um, if I wanted to look at, let's say an example here, maybe I can make one up, change the pen here. So maybe my equation is, uh, maybe the question is something like this. Um, let's see here. Maybe I say, if equation one 
is something like uh, y equals, let's just say something like 2x plus 5. I'm making a nice straight line here that's positive. My question would be, what would be uh, the equation of the line? I'm just going to short form it as EQN here. Equation of um, the line with a y intercept of let's say three, um, and I want it to be perpendicular. Okay, so that is perpendicular. Uh oh, I'm running out of room here. Perpendicular. I really gotta watch my running here. To equation one. In other words, I have an equation. The equation is y equals two x plus five. And the question is, I'm looking for another equation that has a y-intercept of three, but is perpendicular to equation one. Okay, so in other words, here's equation one. That's y equals two x plus five. I want equation two, which is y equals, don't know what comes in front of here. I'll leave a space here. But I do know that it has a y-intercept of positive three. I hope you can see that because this second term is always the y-intercept, that's always the general form of a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept and this is the gradient, or slope. So in this case, I know for sure it's going to end in a plus three. But I don't know what goes here. I don't know what number to put here. But I actually can figure it out because remember, they're perpendicular. So m1 times m2 equals negative 1. That's what I said the key thing was here. So in other words, I know m1. m1 is 2. Okay, so 2 times m2 equals negative 1. So I just want to solve for m2. So m2 is then going to be, well, negative 1. I'm going to, remember, this 2 is multiplying the m2, so I want to divide it. Okay, so that means m2 is going to be negative 1 half. That's the number that goes in front of here. So I could say y equals negative one half x plus three. If you wanted, you could also rewrite it like this. If you prefer, you could actually write it like this. It's actually the same thing. Right? You can just leave the one out and just put this negative in front of the x. So this is also the same thing. So this graph and this graph will be perpendicular to each other. You see how easy that is? If you want to make things perpendicular, all you have to do is remember that the slopes here will multiply to negative one. That's the key thing to perpendicular graphs, I think. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. It's just a straight line still. Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense.